Welcome everyone, I am the Depressed Dior and this is Lumbus Company. Alright, let's uh, do some more stuff. Uh, a few things I did realize with mirror dungeons and getting more of these stupid things for the shop. Um, certain um, identities will actually give you a percentage bonus. Also, the more of those special tiles that are specific to the, uh, the Blade Lineage stuff um, actually award you more of this, uh, of this currency. So it's definitely good to do as many of them, of them as you can. I generally try to do all of them except for the boss or any of the elite encounters because those aren't fun either. Um, besides that, um, let's go ahead and dive right in. We got more, more lore to go through. Our bus boat with a dead engine was still sailing with every center's heart and bodies. Well, not exactly every center, but most center's hearts and bodies working as one. Oh, and we learned a val valuable lesson about surviving in the Great Lake, that breaking its laws can have catastrophic results. And that's when we noticed that our bus boat was getting dragged by something off, uh, by something off course. Just like Esmeril said, two massive vessels were approaching us not, not far from where we were. We're not exactly on a collision course with them, though. Ishmael didn't entertain me with an answer. Instead, she took the helm and threw it wildly in one direction. Whoa. This skill, Splashy Drift? Huh. Didn't know buses could drive, drift like a bus. Or sorry, could, didn't know ships could drift, uh, drift like a bus. Karen, impressed. Redhead, not bad. You have competition, Karen. Uh, hold up. That's weird. She turned the helm all the way. Why are we still headed? Uh, between those ships. It, it, it's like we're stuck on rails. Now, uh, Ishmael turned the Mephistopheles helm around to the opposite direction of the two ships. We were getting dragged even faster by them. And there was nothing we could do about it. Is she? Don't tell me you hit the reverse, the reverse, the reverse gear. I turned the engine off. What? Well, are those ships melding into one another? You bloody loon! That's what you you got to say. We're about to get squashed like bugs. You swabby. What happened to all the bravado from our little- Shut up. I'm going to use the momentum of the pole when it's it's the strongest to get us out of here, and- uh, we're, we're going to crash. Now. Immediately before the crash. Ishmael definitely revved the engine and adjusted several levers in a series of decisive motions before speeding us between and past the two vessels. The back of our ship. The ship's stern was crushed, but it's it was better than getting completely sandwiched between those two ships. Mephistopheles' engine can re reconstruct damage of this severity within the next few days. Wait, this is more than just some damage. It's like they deleted a part of our ship. Gone, as though it never had been part of the ship, of been a part of the ship's blueprint. I took another look at where the stern used to be. It was as the center said, the stern wasn't crushed. It was effectively deleted as though it had never been there. It left a bizarre looking cross section behind. 
It's a Yukor singularity, the resonance uh, tuning fork. Ships operating in the Great Lake can merge and separate when needed, as though they've always been a single vessel or as though they've never been parts of the, sh of the same ship. Resonance tuning forks used by vessels of that size are strong enough to pull in smaller boats without tuning forks like ours, or even ones with tuning forks with mismatching wavelengths. Ah, 이런 명령이 내려지지도 않았는데 운전대를 잡게 되었네요, 관리자님. Yeah, right. Apologies for taking the helm without your orders, manager. No, don't. You just saved all our lives. 뭐 그러려던 건 아니긴 하지만요. 이해해 주신다니 고맙네요. I wasn't trying to, but thanks for understanding anyway. Then what were you trying to do? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Ah, 시키지 않은 설명이 나오는 것까지 이해 좀 해주세요. 워낙 떡떡거리는 소리가 시끄러워서 배 한가운데에서 귀마개를 할순 없잖아요. Oh, and please accept my apology for giving unsolicited advice. A certain somebody won't stop flapping her gums at me, so I had to. It's not like I could plug my ears in the middle of the voyage, right? <laughs> <laughs> I've had my share of blunt, foul mouth talk during the war. She's not the first to do so. Doesn't matter. As long as she can live up to her words, no need to get in the way, I suppose. I'm sorry, Executive Manager. I must take a short break. Be not so crestfallen, Commander. I mean, Captain. Silence. Executive Manager is our commanding officer. Always had, always been. Downcast and shoulder slump, Otis made her way into the ship's ship cabins, formerly the bus cabins. Our destination is near. Welcome to one of the five great ports of Ukor, the Marlin port. Faust's voice was dry and emotionless, as though what had just happened didn't affect her one bit. Wow, that's so big. It has to be one of the biggest ships I've ever seen. Hong Lu was right. We were approaching a massive ship so large that it could be mistaken for an island. Whichever the case, it was clear that the port was a megastructure built from countless metal shipping containers. Mist fades, and what was unseen before unveils itself. I scarcely did expect the pa the pall to shroud a structure such as this. Ship? I don't know. Can we really call that a ship at this point? Also, one second. Can I check something here? Yeah, there's not much I can do about it. All right. Actually, yeah, I can. Let's, uh... Turn these down a little bit. It sounds like the, the music is overwhelmed the voices at this point. Even I can barely hear it. Can't help but agree there, Ishmael. Does that count as a ship in the Great Lake? Your landsman common sense is useless at the, at the Great Lake. You know, it was just a yes or no question. Ships that use resonance tuning forks like those are as common as crimes are in the back streets, or I guess as common as the whales are in the Great, Great Lake. All right.
story and combat this time. After numerous trials and tribulations, we arrived. Uh, we finally arrived at our destination. Looks like this place is called Marlin Portship of Yukor, a giant seafaring vessel made uh, made by merging together countless shipping containers. So yeah, the first time you do each of these story missions, you'll actually get this fancy uh, bloody scabbard stuff, which is good because I kind of need some. I need at least enough to get the um, the identity that that's on it. I don't really care about the rest of the stuff. All right, now. Uh, you might notice there's some difference to the team. You do have all these tabs that you can take advantage of. Oh my god, 19 tabs, you don't need that many. Um, obviously I still have the team here, um, and then for this, which I've been actually using for... Um, oh, the 20% bonus also applies to this too. Neat. Anyway, um, going only female characters uh, does limit me as far as what sort of fancy builds I can go with. Um, so really the only one that really stood out was Charge, which I haven't done in a while. Um, and it's, uh, I have enough to work with, let's put it that way. Uh, the big thing that stands out about the, uh, charge team is, of course, Telephone Pole. Uh, Telephone Pole does, uh, is a great way of gaining charge, and if you happen to, uh, can I look at it? It's not gonna let me look at it. Oh, wait, I can look at it here. Uh, Corrosion. So... This is the base version. The corrosion version uh, not only gives um, 10 charge, uh, it also gives 12 charge to all allies as well. This is pretty much guaranteed that you'll have enough charge to do all your fancy charge mechanics. It does give yourself uh, fragile and rupture as well, so if you get hit, you're gonna pay for it, but at that point you have enough charge that you'll probably be able to blow through everything. Um, some of these characters I did mess with a little bit. Uh, I think I played messed with cleanup agents a few times, um, at least L2 and L3. Um, I didn't really mess around with um, L3 cleanup agent for um, Ryoshu here, but supposedly it's really good, and so far it has not disappointed. It does quite a bit of damage. Um, yeah, at this point, yeah, she has ways of gain charge gain charge and use that charge for additional power and then she has this move which will just absolutely shred everything um, and if you happen to have a 15 charge you can do charge barrier which gives you more charge in return um, it's pretty pretty amazing um, I did also add in wishing Cairn because I had that available for um, Don Quixote here uh, a few other things oh yeah for Ryoshu I am using blind obsession which is a Another one, another EGO that does charge, but it's only to herself, but still it's better than nothing. It's also a, just a different element from her base, uh, Force of the Flames, so I figured that would be nice to have. Um, there are no charge mechanics for um, Otis, as far as I know. Yeah, I don't think she has one. Um, Technically, uh, Rodian does have charge for her kit, but it's completely self-contained for the most part. And it's really only used for, I think only for her skill two. Yeah, it's only used for her skill two. Um, beyond that though, she doesn't really have a lot of ways of, no, oh, actually it does give you some. Yeah, she has some ways of gaining charge and then you use it in combination with her skill two to do more damage. Um, she also, uh, nope, that's it for her. And then over the course, we get to play around with the um, Arcor uh, Reindeer again. Um, she also has her own charge EGO, which is her Blind Obsession. That actually provides charge to herself, which is kind of nice. So we get to play around with all that again, which is going to be fun. Um, I won't have one thing I have noticed uh, recently. If I do auto things, it doesn't seem like it'll favor things that I don't have enough charge for, like Mind Whip. So there might be less chance of me killing myself by accident. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, the only thing that kind of sucks about this is if you don't have any um, uh, any sin at, at, out the gate, um, you may have a little bit of trouble getting things revved up, and you'll be at the mercy of um, you know your clash power, which isn't the best for some of these. But still, um, it's been kind of fun to play around with. Um, definitely requires a little bit more effort than me just hitting auto all the time. So let's see how it goes. Ta Kram Yogiso Chamshi Chakbere Shikaikun. Well then, 
This is where we'll go our separate ways for a short while. Karan and I have business to attend here. Business? Why? What is it this time? I'm looking to buy some Merve perfume. Let's leave it at that. Regilia said, looking straight at an advertisement before us. Bottles of Mermaid perfume extracted straight from their left fence. Special discount. Oh, art thou planning to procure some for, for us as well? Quite curious I am of that mermaid perfume. What other curiosities of the Great Lake await us, I wonder? A significant source of income for the people of Yukor comes from selling whale and mermaid products, whale oil, mermaid tears, mermaid perfumes, whale cuisine, and more, to list a few examples. Oh, hello! I spy a purveyor of ice creams gone over yonder. Sardine whale flavored ice cream? How is that appetizing to you? Sardines are quite are quite the savory nosh, even if they have a funny look to them. Alas, I am more keen to the to learn the flavors of the Marlin whale ice cream. Will you not accompany, accompany us to our destination, dear guide? I've done my job as your guide. I point you in the right direction, and that's where my responsibilities end. It's not my job to accompany you all the way there. While you may be correct, your words also come across as rather impersonal. Then you heard me right, Yi Sang. I don't intend to make friends with any of you, nor do I want to. <laughs> don't let these small talks give you the wrong impression. Now, Ms. Faust. Our allies are expecting us. The before team on the ground will relay us the location of the Lobotomy Corps branch housing the Golden Bow. According to our last communication, they should be waiting for us there. This place is a, a bit spooky. I don't see anyone here. What's up with that, Fao? I can tell from your tone that you doubt me. This is the location I was relayed. Ah, well, we got here first. Bloody brilliant to before team. More like belated team, innit? Allow me to make a minor correction. We, have ar we arrived about one hour and thirty minutes behind schedule. 
지난번 제이사에서 만난 LCCB 대원들은 훨씬 전부터 대기. 음, 아, LCCB agents we met at Jacob were already on the scene and. I'm sure that comment reminded everyone of the same duo. It did for me too. Thinking about them even for a brief moment is. It appears that they have elected to sleep in lieu of our appearance. Effie, sorry. We didn't deserve you to. Yeah, ain't none of you gotta watch, eh? What's the what's the hell's wrong with you lot? Man, you're saying some more talkative. Ah, apologies. In our hurry, we happened upon an unforeseen mis mishap on our journey here. Yeah. <laughs> Gah, then why didn't you take that into account before you left? Someone from the corner of the shipping container rises from their nap and stretches. They sound oddly aggressive. Oh? My, my. Hong Lu, wait. Your badge is upside down. Remember to keep up to always keep yourself uh, your appearance tidy. Huh? What's the sticky red thing on your on his chest, hung an upside down LCB CB agent badge? It was soaked in blood. I hope this this badge would have had a more dramatic effect. Let's see here. Limbus Company, before team, team leader. Fool was lording around in our territory. I've got to say, that was bravely stupid. <laughs> that sorry production was, was an insult to art. Get to the point before I SYNC. You lads, so tardy yet so impatient. Why don't you first give us a listen? You're looking for the golden, whatchamacallit, aren't we? <laughs> what have you done to the team leader? Hold your horses now. Lads live and well. This is a hostage ne negotiation, then. This ain't me first ransom rodeo, if you know what I mean. It's simple. Give us the cash, and we'll return your friend. May don't get you get the cash and we give your friend an impromptu burial in a shipping container right here. Kidnappers, eh? Pieces of shit. Well well, I wouldn't do that if I if I were you, laddie. Think before you act, eh? Anything go goes wrong and your friend bites it. Well, 
It's very straightforward if I do say so myself. Just do as we say, and you and your, that friend of yours will continue on your merry venture. Get back to finding your golden whatchamacallit. Hell, we'll even throw in a full on gourmet tour guide for you, just to sweeten the deal. You bloody maggot. Okay, okay, gotcha. I'll s I'll, I see what's going on here. Give us some time to th discuss this, why don't you? Look, there's no point in escalating this. It'll do no nothing but draw un unnecessary attention to us. If our impulsive actions get the LCCB agent killed. True. They hold the upper hand in this negotiation. I don't believe these fools know much about the Golden Bow. They likely kidnapped him by chance, thinking they could get a hefty ransom out of him. Though we have come across many men and women of evil nature in our adventure, such brazen villainy has heretofore not been, not been encountered. How classless. It's, it is grotesque with, without a cause. Charging them head on will only sick their friends after us. Friends who may be involved with a local pow powerful uh, syndicate. Our chance, our chance of victory is slim, so should such an event come to pass. We sh do not possess enough inten intel on Yukor to effectively maneuver the situ that situation. Yeah, we don't even know how big the syndicate behind this guy is. But from the way he said his lines, this probably isn't his first time doing this, right? Hmm. Um, then there's also a chance that they're just small fries, isn't there? If they're small fries, let's crush them all. We'll hit them before they even have a chance to lay a finger on the hostage. No, it could mean that their syndicate may be so small and scattered that it is impossible to be traced. Ugh. So we don't know anything great. Are they really going to if we don't pay up? Blast it. I know they're kind. Scum like them are around every corner of the city. If this goes cock up, they'll kill the hostages and won't even leave a body for us to find. All kinds of awful images and ominous uh, speculation begin to overwhelm us. The so-called kidnappers were crowd crowding amongst themselves, giggling and chattering. They knew that, th that our options were limited. Okay, then I'm going to start off by asking how much they want. We're out of uh, out of our element here. The best I can do is try to gather some information, at least. Uh, a short, exasperated sigh escaped Ishmael's lips. She had been standing here this whole time, arms crossed over the harpoon that rested upon her chest. You're going to pay them, those bastards. Are you crazy? I mean, you could chime in any time, Ishmael. What else can we do? Even now, the hostage. I don't care about your excuses. 
맞아요. I only care to know if this is really, if this really is the best course of action you could come up with. Any doubts about the manager's decisions? Are unnecessary. Yeah, you're as predictable as always. Executive manager's decisions are orders. To doubt them is insubordination. Ishmael, it doesn't matter how competent of a sea dog you are. Huh, okay. If you say so, but who cares? They've not given me an order. They didn't forbid me from doing anything. So what's the problem here? I just can't sit here and watch this play out. Then say something! <laughs> Ishmael strode toward the kidnappers. It was plain from her tone and expression that she did not care one bit about what the other sinner said. I'll gladly accept the consequences. She shot me a fleeting glance before raising her harpoon. For insubordination. Oh, sorry. Cut her off there. For insubordination, manager. Then thrust her well sharpened harpoon right into one of the kidnappers' foreheads. The entire course of her action, from start to finish, was so full of absolute confidence that no one even thought to stop her. I couldn't either. O, O, F. Miyoshi was right. The kidnapper suffered a total obliteration of forehead. Uh, Ishmael, what did you just... What did you just do? Sinclair was the first to snap out of this stupefied silence. The LCBC B agent they took hostage, we just put him at risk. Because of us, he could, could... Sinclair was trembling hard. I couldn't tell if it was the welling tears that he was holding back or uncontrollable fury. Just like then. Just like back then with Effie and with Sadi. It was... It was only a few months ago. Don't tell me you moved on already. Sinclair's memories. I saw an image of Sade and Effie both smiling. Both with excellent field both were excellent field agents. And because they were both excellent agents, they suffered to their last moments before our eyes. Helplessly watching as they slowly expired in front of him. At his home at his old home at that. That day must have been scorched into his memories. I recalled Ishmael's vision that I witnessed back at the boatworks. Was that also a moment that was burned into her memories? I wonder. Ishmael didn't e seem to find Sinclair's questions worth answering. She strode toward one of the closed shipping containers and kicked it open. A body that had been dead for so long that its complexion and consistency barely resembled that of a he living human slumped to the floor. This one's been dead for at least a week and of course isn't our LCB agent. Ishmael kicks the body, tossing it on its back. But in the looks of it, this, one's, this one was a tourist visiting Marlin Port, probably loaded too, if they could afford to travel to, a great, to the Great Lake just for its sights. They could have been able to afford whatever ransom the pirates demanded. Kidnap, extort, execute. These syndicates have been repeating these three steps for a good while at UCOR, even as their names and organizations change with time. They're everywhere, like Berman. Maybe 
It'll be more accurate to call them pirates here. 인지를 돌려줄 것처럼 계속 돈을 요구하다가 상대에게 더 이상 뜯어낼 게 없을 때. They never return the hostages. They'll keep keep asking for more and more ransom until the money well dries up. Ishmael poked the body with her foot. Then they kill the hostages, like they did this one in. Alright, I'm gonna need to put a break here, because I have no idea how long this is gonna go. So, I am the Rusty, or this is Limbus Company. I'll see you guys in a bit.